This is the worst practical joke uh, to this day still that I've ever pulled off. Uh, for a couple reasons, looking back. It happened over 20 years ago now. And uh, for one thing, looking back, it, it went on too long for a joke. I get that now. It went on for over uh, four months, which is a long time for a joke. <laughs> and the person I was joking with didn't know me or know that I was joking. <laughs> so from their perspective, I do understand now, it was less of a joke and more of being physically harassed by a stranger for nearly half a year. <laughs> which was not enjoyable for them. Uh, it happened when I was at Gonzaga University. It was my last semester there. And we had this, uh, in the cog in our cafeteria, we had this machine. When you were done eating, you would take your tray with your dishes and your silverware and stuff, and you would set it on this series of rotating metal shelves, like three levels, and it would carry your dishes back to the dishwashers on the other side of the station who would remove and clean them. And there was a metal countertop in front of these shelves with two slots, little 45 degree angle slots. You're supposed to drop your silver off down that, and it would slowly slide back to the dishwashers on the other side. That's how you were supposed to dispose of things if you were an adult with dignity and respect for others. <laughs> I figured out the last semester I was there, I could instead needlessly be a sociopath, and I could take my silverware, and if I just violently just whipped it into the metal wall on the side of the machine, if I got the angle and speed right, I could bounce it around the shelves and hit the dishwashers hard enough to make them scream out loud. <laughs> and that's the only way you knew you hit them. Right? Because you're working in the dark. There's a visual obstruction. You're just throwing, hoping. Sometimes a millisecond later, you'd hear like, ah, God damn it, and feel victory. <laughs> Rise up in your chest. Mm, I did it. <laughs> so that goes on for a couple months. And I didn't get caught. And, and a lot of times when someone's doing something bad and they don't get caught, they escalate their behavior. And I'm no exception. And so for further amusement, every few weeks, I decided I would uh, talk a few of my friends, three of them, into gathering in front of the dishwashing station with me into what I called full frontal assault mode. <laughs> Four across, right? like, like I was some important military tactician. The guys on the sides are doing the whipping, like I just described from both sides. Guys in the middle are working the shoots. Because <laughs> if you threw silverware down there and didn't rattle it, you could bounce it off the bottom and hit them from a variety of frontward angles. <laughs> These poor bastards, I think about life from their perspective now. They're just trying to make it through another terrible shift. It's humid, it stinks, it's a tough job, minimum wage, got a dickhead boss, and every once in a while, just a blitzkrieg of cutlery. <laughs> ring, ding, 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 nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, buddy. You're being attacked by an enemy you couldn't possibly understand. I'm the enemy, and I don't really get it myself. So this goes on the whole semester. And then the last day I would ever be in that building, it's like God had been watching me the entire time. And he sent me a sign that he wanted me to kick it up a notch for the final battle. <laughs> That's how I chose to interpret it. There was a business expo next door for graduating seniors. And one of these little kiosks trying to attract seniors was giving away these uh, dry erase boards for free if you talk to them. And when I saw that, it was like a cartoon light bulb went on above my head. I knew I needed one of those for the final battle. I needed to send them a message. So I grabbed one of those boards and I wrote five horrible words on it. And then I put it on a tray with nothing to distract from my hate, let it rotate around, gave them time to absorb it as we lined up into full frontal assault mode for the very last time. And it was terrible what I wrote, it was disgusting. But I can't think of anything better today. Here come the spoons, motherfucker. <laughs> And they came. They came fast and hard. I was, I was so into the final launch, I was giddy with excitement. I failed to recognize that one of these guys finally snaps and loses their shit. <laughs> Comes out from behind the machine, almost grabs me, chases me to the entire cafeteria in a parade of profanity. <laughs> Funniest slash scariest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> like, I'm scared. I'm running as fast as I can run, but I keep laughing because I can't, you know, stop thinking about how I look to the other students. I'm getting chased by Yosemite Sam with a prison vocabulary. <laughs> it's a pretty good show, midday. But I am scared. I realize if he gets a hold of me, he's not going to give me a firm talking to. <laughs> We're way past that. Only murder is alive behind his pupils. <laughs> but he didn't catch me that day. I was younger, thinner, and faster, and I escaped. And it's been over 20 years, but I still think about him. And he has to still think about me. 
I gotta be top three on his people to kill list. <laughs> I harassed him for months and then got him fired, I'm guessing. I never told on him, never tried to get him fired. He had to have been fired. There's no way you get to try to openly murder a student in a Catholic university cafeteria in front of 500 eyewitnesses while yelling motherfucker at least 20 times. <laughs> and then just be like, sorry about that, guys. I kind of lost my cool for a second. I'm gonna go back and wash some more dishes if that's okay. Yeah, don't worry about it, Terry. You're irreplaceable. No, he was replaced. That's sad. Made a sad life sadder. In the years since, I've dedicated my life to trying to get more exposure, trying to sell more tickets, which is good for my life in a variety of ways, but also increases the odds that eventually he will find me. <laughs> and I'm rooting for him. I hope he does. I'm the bad guy in this story. I want him to have some closure. I want him to get his revenge. I'll take it further. I hope he kills me. Not soon, but in like 30, 40 years, right? None of us get to cheat the reaper. Best case, you get the death of your choice. And ideally, I don't want to fade away in some sterile hospital bed. I want to die suddenly, right, in an interesting way, leave the world with a good, weird, dark story for other people to tell, the kind of story I like to hear. So how great would that be? 30, 40 years from now, I wake up to find him somehow still alive, standing above my bed, which is impressive, because he is fucking old at this point. And agile for his age to get in the house quietly. He's been cape fearing it for decades, living on dips and juice and push ups and hate. And the last words I hear on this earth are just, here come the spoons, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, thank you guys very much. I had a lot of fun with you guys. I hope you had fun with me. Appreciate you guys. Have fun, Boise. <laughs>